actual electrical content related to four to twilly four to twilly i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fuck up that what we're gonna look at today and recaps i've covered this before i've covered it on my youtube as well but i'm gonna cover it again in this context of this job we're doing here is i'm gonna go over four to twenty milliamp process control signals and indeed analog control signals in general so if you've been here before you'll probably know a little bit about this if you're one of them dickheads that watches me to tell me i'm wrong you'll probably know loads about this and if you've not been here before i'll cover it now on the whiteboard and show you through the bits and bobs we're using but what we're going to do is we're going to fire up this vega pulse c22 distance sensor kind of lent to me by the water sparky Vega. While we're at it as well, yeah, I absolutely endorse Vega and all their products. And if you are looking to do some flow measurement or water measurement or solids measurement or any kind of measurement they do, first of all, go and check out my video on the Vega Buzz because it tells you all about it and give uh, give French a shout. I think he specialises in the water, but he'll put you in touch with the right person. They do all sorts of bulk, powders, aggregates, water measurements and that. And the big kind of done this stuff for this video of this series of videos, and this video is old, so cheers. So that, that sensor can measure a distance, it comes down to here. I don't know what these cables do, but I've noticed that it's furled up on the brown and the blue. So I'm guessing, I don't know what that brown cable's for, I can look at the instructions, that might be, that might be, that's a screen, that's a screen, so it's a two core. But don't get me wrong, what I could do is I could go on the iPad that I've bought to fuck it, this, I've had to buy this Android tablet to do this job, because it needs connected to something, yeah? Now I could go on there and Google it, that's not the fucking fun part, is it? Let's pretend just for now it's an instrument that I've found and we'll just derive what it does from what I've got. So if you look at this cable look, there's two cores, a brown and a blue, and then there's this one. This is a screen. That's just a screen of the cable. So it's a two-wire instrument. There you go. That's what we know. And if we look at the sensor, there'll probably be some information on that we can take as well. We know who makes it. We know what model it is. It's an RA2224HA. And it's got some sort of Bluetooth symbol on it and a serial number. So we've got that information. Now, if we're struggling, that's all dev. But then, obviously, I could start looking on the Google. The one thing I've derived from this is that is definitely an analog instrument. And that is definitely a two-wire one. Now, what the fuck does that even mean? Cut. Like I say, I might teach you something to suck eggs, but let's pretend no one knows what we're doing, right? This is what we're going to work. It's not going to work too bad with the lights, right? Also, it's going to be backwards if you're on Instagram, but on YouTube, this will be the right way around now because I'll flip it. There's a lot to go at. Let's start. Here's a little simple drawing. Let me put that there so you can screenshot it and have a look at it. There you go. You've done that now. Right. Instrument. Forget what we've got here. Let's go old school. We'd have an instrument that would be here, and the instrument would have some sort of measuring device. So in this case, it's just measuring from 0% to 100%. And that span could be anything. It could be a weight. You could say, well, this weigh is capable of weighing from zero, because obviously all weighs start at zero, to one ton. And then you apply a percentage to that. So you work zero to one ton becomes zero to 100%, which in the world of milliamps becomes four to 20 milliamps. So here, that's the lowest point of the process, the variable of the process. That's the highest point of the variable of the process. So at the lowest point, it's zero because it's fuck all. Zero's nothing. And at 100%, it's all of it. Yeah? So let's imagine we need to apply it to something. So it could be pressure, weight, uh, pressure, weight, height, distance, anything that's got a value that's proportional. So if you can measure it with a known SI unit measurement, you can measure it with an instrument that you'll be able to get for that. So let's say... It's, it's a height. So let's say this is zero metres and this is one metre because that works for us. So this is now an ultrasonic sensor like that one measuring down. So when the height is zero, as in there is nothing there, it's zero. And when it's at one metre high, it's one metre high. Computer, the computer over here, this is the computer now that deals with the controls. It doesn't understand metres. It doesn't understand milliamps, millibar, bar, centimetres, millimetres or anything. Because we're saying here this is a metre, the range is a metre. The range could be a millimetre or a mile, or well, a kilometre, couldn't it? Because it's we're doing SI units a kilometre. The computer doesn't know any of that shit. All it gets is a number, a value. It crunches numbers. It doesn't crunch actual electrical 
SI units, it crunches numbers. So we're here, we're at zero at one. So zero is zero percent and one is 100 percent. Make sure you've got that in your head. Lock that in, lock in that deal. Welcome to Stratton Oatmere. So your instrument's all calibrated to measure between zero and one meter, but we need to move it to the control device, the PLC. This will be the PLC or the computer. Yeah, we need to shift it. And we're gonna do that with milliamps. So what we do is we take the percentage and we convert it to milliamps. The lowest milliamp available, there's an exception to this in this voltage as well, but I'm gonna talk about four to 20 milliamps. The lowest milliamp available is four. And the highest milliamp available is 20. Therefore, we assign 0% to 4 milliamps and 100% to 20 milliamps. And I'm going to talk about why that is in this little box down here. But just remember, 4 is assigned to the lowest process value. 20 is assigned to the top process value. And that's the range that we're going to work in. But let me just talk about outside that range so you can, I can solve that problem. Why? The other common ways of doing this are 1 to 10 volts. Yeah. 4 to 20 milliamps and 0 to 20 milliamps. Not one's 10 volts or 0 to 10 volts as well. We get 0 or 1, right? It gets complicated. There's a lot of the good thing about standards is there's so many to choose from. The good thing about 1 to 10 volts, I think it's cheap. 4 to 20 milliamps and 0 to 20 milliamps sound the same. The problem is when something's at 0, it's at 0. So when if you use 0 to 20, which was a common way of doing it, if something's 0, it's the lowest, isn't it? And if something's 20, it's the highest. What if it's turned off? So if the computer, if this is cut, if you cut this cable here, that sees zero. So it doesn't think there's nothing there. It thinks the lowest value is there, which is wrong. So if you use four, you've got a base point that is above zero. So if it sees zero, it knows it's broken. If it sees four, it knows it's zero. I it cuts mid like that. So yeah, if it sees zero, it knows it's nothing or broken. Whereas with four, if it sees zero, it knows it's off. If it sees below four, it knows it's faulty. If it sees four, it knows it's zero. If it sees 20, it knows it's full. And if it sees in excess of 20, it knows it's faulty. So if you think about it and write on a bit of paper as a line, naught to 10, say it was a speed forward, one would be slowly forward. 10 would be fast forward. What about if you negative it? If you went neg 10 volts, it'd be fast backwards. But at zero, you've got nowhere to go. At naught 20 milliamps, again, if it's positive, 20 milliamps, it goes forward. If it's negative 20 milliamps, it goes back. But round zero, it's got nowhere to go. Well, with four to 20 milliamps, you get a little span in the middle, which is a definite zero point. So from plus four to neg four, you get a dead space, so you know whether you're going one way or the other. Does that make sense? I don't know. Anyway, getting into naught to 10, 4 to 20 and 0 to 20 is definitely something you should do. They're all your analog values, maybe more available, I don't know, than the ones I deal with. However, I can see this video is going to be fucking huge. So just now then, we're measuring the distance between 0 and 1 metre. That's what we're going to do. Although I probably fucked up because I don't think that's a metre. Um, so it's not. So I can fuck that up. But yeah. So now we've got a way of the instrument making the measurement, the instrument taking that data it's got, and send it to the PLC as an analog value. Not to 10, 4 to 20, not to 20, but we're going to deal with 4 to 20. <sighs> this isn't even what I want to talk about. That was just the background. Jesus Christ, you're in for a rough ride, kids. Anyway, if you knew all that, there's nothing wrong with the refresher, is there? And if you didn't know all that, you can dive into that more and find out. But all I want to talk about today is the wiring. So this instrument, yeah, it's got four wires coming to it. As you can see, I've left that in, and it's got four wires coming to it. It's got a pair for positive and negative for the power. And it's got a pair that send back the analog value. So you've got everything you need, don't you? You've got power to run your instrument, do whatever it needs to do. Keep it running, put the lights on, light up the screens, let you program it. And it's got a pair of wires that let you get the data from this to the machine, to the, to the PLC's reading it. Fan fucking tastic, super duper. However, there's four wires there now. Well, that means you've got to put two more wires in. 50% more wires, is that right? I think it is. 50% more wires than you were dealing with in the first place. 50% more terminating, more terminals, more IO, more contacts, more work. Everything's going to be more expensive. How can you reduce that expense of four wires? Well, I'm sure some people are screaming at the screen now, especially you Ash from Center Control Systems screaming there or some of you clever bastards, yeah? What you do is you remove the power contacts. You get rid of them. Then you get rid of those two wires. 
and you get rid of that power there. Which means not only do you get rid of those two wires, but you also get rid of the, all, the, all the distribution infrastructure that's there. And you're up this, which is a two wire sensor. And this will be a PLC card that's capable of one, providing the power over the two wires, which is voltage, while simultaneously measuring the current, which is the signal. So then you get a two wire sensor, which takes both things that were required over the same pair of wires. So I'm guessing that this sensor, which has got two wires, and I'm just guessing I haven't even read the instructions yet, even though French gave me months ago, is taking its power and providing its signal on these two wires, which simplifies everything, but makes things a little bit more complicated, if you know what I mean. I'll give you a clue. We ain't getting nowhere near using that instrument today because there's so much more to consider. So now I need to power the instrument up if I want to play with it on these two wires. Well, I don't suppose I just, I suppose I could just jizz 24 volts up this. I could jizz 24 volts up it and I imagine it would power the instrument so that I could connect to it on Bluetooth. I know it's Bluetooth, yeah? So I could just jizz 24 volts up there. I'm guessing that the brown is the positive and the blue is the negative. So I could take my bench power supply, which is just over here out of shot, this one, and I could jizz 24 volts pit. I'm guessing that'd work, but that wouldn't be a realistic scenario, would it? Also, I'd set the current limit in and maybe put a fuse in so I don't blow it up. But I'm sure French would be mega pissed off if I blow that centre of his lent me. So I'm going to dig a bit deeper. However, I will tell you there are other ways of doing this, safer ways of doing it. And I've got a few examples of what you can use down here. So let's have a nose at them.